Good morning, everyone. My name is Fred Bidwell. I'm the executive director of Front International, and I'd like to welcome you to the kickoff of our second edition, Oh Gods of Dust and Rainbows. Uh, it's a thrill to be here. Before we uh, jump in, I would like to welcome Bradford Davey, Chief Strategy Officer of the City of Cleveland. Hey, good morning. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Good, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> My name is Bradford Davey. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for the City of Cleveland. On, on behalf of Mayor Justin Bibb, I would like to welcome all of you to the city, uh, home to one of the nation's renowned uh, cultural institutions and a thriving art and cultural scene. Uh, I would also just like to say that the administration really celebrates art for its power uh, to unite, to inspire, and to heal. And so on behalf of the mayor, I would like to welcome you to the city and encourage you, uh, Clevelanders, uh, guests from near and far, to really engage in this really terrific summer-long celebration. Uh, I would also like to just thank um, Front uh, and really just uh, say that the city is proud to really support um, your initiatives uh, to drive economic impact through um, our tourism for your support uh, and efforts to center the city of Cleveland as a real cultural destination um, and uh, really a leader in the space um, and for all of your work to support our neighborhoods uh, diverse and vibrant in their their heritage of art and so thank you and I'd like to bring Fred back up thanks so much Uh, thank you, Bradford. Uh, I should say the city of Cleveland gave us very important and early financial support in 2018 and repeated that again in 2022. Uh, that commitment um, uh, to this project did so much to give this project momentum and make it a success. So thank you very much. To the city of Cleveland. Uh, the, uh, so, uh, it's uh, a real pleasure and a privilege to start this project off, uh, our preview days, here at the Cleveland Museum of Art. Um, you know, we call it preview days for a reason. Think of this as a soft launch. Uh, uh, you know, uh, projects this big expand uh, to about two or three percent more than the time that you have to spend uh, to get it done. So. Uh, uh, this is a, a thrilling kickoff. Many of you will be uh, seeing some of our venues today. There will be uh, rainbows for sure, but maybe even dust, literally plaster dust, uh, as uh, we get things started. But uh, uh, the presentation here at the Cleveland Museum, as always, is pristine. So let me welcome Scott Mueller, the uh, board chair of the Cleveland Museum of Art. Uh, <clears throat> well, welcome. Uh, uh, I'm glad we're starting off here at the CMA, a place that's you know really near and dear. Um, it's an amazing uh, institution. I'm stepping in uh, for our director, uh, Bill Griswold, who's traveling. Uh, one of the things, uh, two things that really make this uh, an amazing place is first, it's free. So um, what, a, what a great way to assure accessibility in the community by opening the doors free every day to uh, whoever wants to walk in. And it's uh, a tribute to the, the benefactors and founders of the museum and the support of uh, the community and our trustees that, that make it so. The other thing that's uh, really wonderful about this particular institution is its commitment to curation. Um, early on, uh, when we, uh, the museum was founded, um, a lot of the donors, instead of giving us their bad artwork, gave us their good money and allowed curators to really pick amazing work. So this is one of the, uh, it's an encyclopedia uh, a collection, uh, but it's really a curated collection. So we have a saying around here, Cleveland quality, we try to really um, assure the best pieces, and I hope you get a chance uh, to walk around all our galleries. It's, a, it's an amazing um, uh, display. With that, I'm going to uh, turn it over to um, 
Michelle or Fred? Yeah, Michelle, come up. She is one of my colleagues and co-trustees, and, and her and her husband were kind enough to be sponsors of this. So yeah, that. and I should say that both Scott and Michelle are members of the front board. Uh, I, I am, uh, it's my privilege to be a member of the CMA board. Uh, the integration of the creative community here in Cleveland is part of our secret sauce. Um, Michelle, uh, I'd love to have you say a few words about your sponsorship of um, uh, the um, uh, front offering here at the museum. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, um, Fred. Um, I um, um, like uh, welcome to Cleveland. Yesterday evening, we saw all those friends, colleagues from near and far, and just get very excited about uh, France. Uh, um, first, I'm very proud to be a member, next to Fred and uh, Scott, member of the board of directors of uh, Cleveland Museum of Art, France, and MoCA. And uh, Rich, my, um, you know, another, you know, best half, <laughs> are um, and sponsor the exhibition of France and the Cleveland Museum of Art First of all, it's a quintessential role in the community and also in the front, um, forefront of this uh, very important international contemporary art event. And, um, and Rich and I just walked. I hope you will be able to walk to see the exhibition. We're very excited to support the exhibition of uh, you know, front uh, and the Cleveland Museum of Art and including the artists of Julie Mehetu, Nicole Eisenman, beautiful print, and um, Firelay um, Baez. I'm not going to dis discuss the detail, and I really invite you to go to see. And uh, Yoshitomo Nara, and, um, and Matt Ike, who I forget, uh, Tyler, My um, Tyler Mitchell, and beautiful work from the South, uh, you know, Seine. And then finally, I don't want to forget, and um, we would like to recognize uh, um, our friends and supporters of France and the Cleveland Museum of Art, including Kelvin and Eleanor Smith Foundation, and um, I think is uh, Don and Chris Fleischner and Ingo Foundation. So, and um, finally, we're very excited to launch the uh, front today, and uh, Scott and I and Fred welcome you to Cleveland Museum of Art. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so, as you will soon discover if you don't already know, FRONT is a huge project. Uh, it's the product of over three years of planning. As many of you know, we delayed a year because of COVID, so um, this is uh, technically a quadrennial, not a triennial. Um, literally hundreds, perhaps thousands of people uh, worked on this, resulting um, in a presentation of over a hundred artists from around the world um, installing or performing in 30 sites spread across the region. Um, it's, uh, you know, honestly a little hard to wrap your head around. Um, the first question I got in 2018 is, what is this, what is a triennial? Um, and maybe the question for 2020 is, why a triennial? I think we're starting to get used to the idea, but why a triennial in Cleveland? Um, obviously, an international art exhibition of this scale is a huge economic driver for our community. Um, and it's especially welcome for an arts and culture sector that has taken a huge hit in the past few years. Uh, the, uh, I cannot emphasize how damaging the pandemic has been. Uh, I think we all sort of were very aware of the hospitality sector, how uh, that was impacted by COVID, but actually the arts and culture sector was even more damaged uh, 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 by uh, the pandemic. And so uh, an event like this is particularly welcome uh, for um, a sector that has taken a huge hit in the past few years. But aside from the local impact, we believe that initiatives like FRONT are really a needed counterbalance to the concentration of the art market 
uh, around the commercial um, uh, uh, art business in the major coastal cities of North America and beyond. We think that distorts the art market and leaves both artists and art lovers craving for something more authentic, more diverse reflections of the world and communities around us, unconstrained by market conditions and driven by ideas. That is front. We think that the innovations in contemporary art world can happen in places like Cleveland and perhaps can only happen in places like Cleveland in the future. Uh, this happens in Cleveland because of the strength of our local institutions. Cleveland is really uniquely equipped to lead a new approach to convening contemporary art exhibition making. The foundation of FRONT is our collabor uh, collaboration with our 11 presenting partners. These are cultural and educational institutions, each alone with national and international reputations. But together, we form a collaboration unlike any other literally in the world, uh, one that cannot be matched by any other com comparable Midwestern city, perhaps any city in North America. Uh, this, is, um, uh, this is what Cleveland can achieve when we do things together. Uh, and it's not just our presenting partners. Uh, our community is so rich, our exhibiting partners round out the show with compelling installations in their spaces and places. Our collaborations and cooperation with other arts and culture organizations in the city, such as Can Triennial, which opened last week, the Border Light Theater Festival, which opens next week, they all make a compelling argument that Cleveland indeed is a major cultural and intellectual hub in North America. Uh, and it's so great that Front can be an anchor for that. Um, now, a bold initiative like this cannot just happen with collaboration. It's got to happen with commitment and generosity of our funders and supporters. The scores of generous individuals, foundations, corporations, government agencies are just too many to mention here. I, I mean, it kind of breaks my heart not to be able to read every name on this slide um, because it's truly humbling to have their confidence and encouragement. Um, and perhaps that support is maybe the real answer to the question, why a triennial and why Cleveland? Because we can. Uh, so, one learning from our 2018 first edition of Front, we learned many things, trust me, the hard way, uh, is that, this, uh, that a big show like this needs a beginning. Um, we are telling our visitors to start their journey at Transformer Station, the contemporary art space on the west side of Cleveland, now dubbed the PNC Exhibition Hub. The exhibition at Transformer Station outlines the major themes and through lines of the show. It also provides a place for rest and reflection as you explore the exhibition and uh, um, uh, continue your journey. This project and the improvements that have just been completed to, transfer, to Transformer Station to prepare it for this new role could not have been possible without the support of PNC Bank. PNC supported the renovation and activation in 2018 of the Madison Building in Glenville, which served as our artist residency program uh, for our first edition. Uh, and that was a transformative project uh, um, in Glenville that uh, uh, continues to make an impact even though we've turned it back over to the community. Um, uh, PNC's renewed commitment to our project by sponsoring the PNC Exhibition Hub is just another example of the unmatched philanthropic support that Front has enjoyed in Cleveland. I'd like to welcome Pat Pastore, Regional President of PNC, to talk a bit about the partnership. Well, good morning and welcome everyone, and thank you, Fred. Uh, for the introduction. I'm here today because I lead an organization in Cleveland that invests in communities that we serve. As a Main Street Bank, P 
PNC is committed to supporting organizations and initiatives that make Cleveland a great place to live, work, and play. Core to this commitment is our longstanding belief that engagement in the arts enriches lives and builds stronger, more vibrant communities. That's certainly the case in Cleveland and throughout PNC's footprint, where our support comes to life through grants, sponsorships, and collaborations. PNC supports the first-class innovative programming of so many institutions in town. And it's why PNC wanted to support Front International, Cleveland's Triennial for Contemporary Art, when it debuted in 2018. And it's why we are again supporting Front International this year. This exhibition will increase broad community access to arts and culture and the opportunity for children, families, and the neighbors and every one of our communities to more fully participate and appreciate the arts. The triennial will generate new economic activity through cultural tourism, develop an even stronger, more vibrant, creative community, enhance the brand of Cleveland and Northeast Ohio, and stimulate positive change in Cleveland's underserved communities. In closing, on behalf of my local PNC colleagues, Thank you all for being here and thank you to all of the community partners and supporters that are once again bringing Front and Fred's vision to life in 2022. Thank you, Pat. Uh, so uh, you're all here for the art uh, and uh, uh, we're going to get down to it now. Uh, I want to bring Prem Krishnamurthy to the stage. Uh, Prem is our artistic director for this edition. Um, uh, it's been a thrill to work with him uh, and, and, and uh, an interesting process. Prem is, uh, lives in Berlin and uh, for a good part of the planning process for Front was trapped in Berlin. Uh, and so, uh, we have spent hours and hours and hours on Zoom uh, with Prem, artists, uh, other members of the creative and artistic team um, to put together this show, which is, um, I think, so relevant. Uh, its themes and ideas are so relevant and important to this time and to this place. Um, I'd love to have Prem come up and talk a little bit about his vision and what you can expect as you travel through Front this summer. Thank you so much, Fred. Um, and thank you everyone for coming today. As Fred has already mentioned, it's been a long, long, long journey. And so I just want to take a moment. It's really gratifying to be here with everyone. This is the middle of the process. It's already been happening for years, and it will continue to unfold in many ways, not just across the next couple of months, but maybe for years, generations still to come. So I want to take a moment myself to just take a deep breath, and I'll invite you also to just relish being here in the present with everyone here in this room. So let me pull up my notes for a second because it's really meaningful to be here after so many years of planning. Just to start, there are so many people to thank. I can't name everybody. That would take, as Fred said, maybe a roll call of a week or so, but I wanna first thank all of the artists who have given their trust to Front and to Cleveland and to this process, who have come here many times to experience the city, experience its communities, and bring their best work and thinking here. Without them, this show wouldn't exist. And also, to all of the institutional partners, some of whom Fred has named, and their curators, without whom this project wouldn't exist either. This is a massive collaborative undertaking, and it involves so many people intersecting in new ways and trying to think of what art can do in the world. I also want to briefly acknowledge a couple of individuals who may or may not be in the room. Frankly, with the light, I can't entirely see, but their presence is with us. First, Murtaza Vali 
and Annie Wishmeyer, both on our curatorial team who have worked tirelessly on this. Brian Scholas on the publication side. Some of you may have seen the beautiful little guidebook that is already there in the gift shop, and there will be another catalog, the website, and more. Tina Kukelski, who was the original co-artistic director with me and now is part of the larger artistic team, some of whom we have here in the audience. And this team has been an intensely amazing support throughout the process to help be a sounding board and also to help us to figure out what this project should be. And finally, also to my wife and my in-laws who are here in town, uh, and actually this is my first connection with Cleveland, my stepdaughter too, right there. <laughs> family, it's, it's all about family. So I'm gonna give a very brief introduction to some of the ideas in this show um, and where they come from. I mean, the first thing is many of you here are from Cleveland. You know its history. You know the amazing things about it, but also the challenges that it's faced. When Tina Kukelski and I first started this project in 2019, we spent time here thinking about its unique history. The immense prosperity that was produced in Cleveland in a particular moment, but also the economic sorry, the environmental costs of that, the social costs, the fact that Cleveland does experience racial injustice and division. In fact, just in the last weeks, with the shooting of Jalen Walker in Akron, we can see how this region, America in general, and the world as a macrocosm still experience so much division and so much suffering. But while we were looking into these historical facts, we also found reasons for hope. We looked in Cleveland and saw a history of healing and a history of community. The fact that Alcoholics Anonymous, for example, started in Akron, Ohio. The National Museum of Psychology, also one of our venues for this exhibition in Akron. And of course, the Cleveland Clinic, the largest employer in the region, alongside many other institutions of healing. And this is not just on an institutional level. I remember a drive that Tina and I took through the Glenville neighborhood, where in five minutes of driving by car, we drove by 18 different houses of worship. And we thought to ourselves, wow, there is something going on here. There is community, there is music, there are rooms that are unmarked everywhere where people meet and take care of each other. And this is something that became an inspiring force for us. Our show is named after a poem by Langston Hughes, the poet and polymath, who spent his teenage years in Cleveland and produced some of his most important plays at the now Karamu House, which is also a venue for our show. Some of you will have already encountered this poem, but I wanna take a moment to read it aloud again, because the very reading of it is a performance that I think encapsulates so much of this show. The poem is Two Somewhat Different Epigrams from 1957. And it reads, Oh, God of dust and rainbows, help us see that without dust, the rainbow would not be. Two, I look with awe upon the human race and God who sometimes spits right in its face. I think every time I read that, it evokes something new for me. The inseparability of joy and suffering, but also the long time scales at which we have to consider not only human life, but life on this planet. So the basic question which I think you'll encounter throughout this exhibition, and hopefully you'll have a chance to go see in Transformer Station, a bit of an introduction, is the question of how can art heal and transform at different scales? And over these past years, over the pre-pandemic and the entire challenging pandemic period, up until now, here's what we've come up with. One, the scale of the individual. 
We believe that art has a healing power on the scale of daily practice and the individual. There is a way in which the making of art itself, the spending of focused time alone or with others to create something and bring it into the world can have a healing power, even a liberating power. Two, the sharing of joy. Art and other modes, such as music, such as dancing, but also the aesthetic pleasure that's embedded within art, in color, in craft, in all of these things, it has a seductive power, one that can bring people who are different together. This is something that art can do at the collective scale to heal. And third, on the structural level, we are here in a moment of time, in a world, in a society that experiences so many challenges. And one of the fundamental beliefs of this exhibition is that art has the ability to speak with power that artists have a privileged position where they sit with those who have power, social, economic, cultural, spiritual power, and they also have the means and the tools to prototype new ways of living. And this is a power that art can bring to the world to change it in smaller and bigger ways every day. Now, these are big ideas, and you will find them spread across our show in 30 venues with 100 artists in so many more and less obvious ways. I'm going to take a brief moment to just show you a handful of these examples that will help you to find your way through Cleveland, Akron, and Oberlin. For example, right here when you leave, you'll see Julie Moretu's portals an exhibition that she has curated with the Cleveland Museum of Art. It takes her own mindful and meditative approach to mark making and brings it into intersection with the collection of the CMA. And you can also see across many venues, Transformer Station, Akron Art Museum, and Cleveland Public Library, the work of Paul O'Keefe, an artist based here in Cleveland who has worked through the tragic suicide of his son 10 years ago in the form of sculpture. Or when you go to Akron, at Quaker Square, you'll see the work of Chakaya Booker, who uses industrial materials, in particular tires, to create new works of sculpture that take on their own power and resonance. Also in Akron, the Astor Gates presents a film a Clay Sermon, which is the anchor point for an entire presentation that is not to be missed at the Akron Museum of Art, curated by Murtaza Vali, which is about the power of craft and material in healing. We also have projects, as I mentioned, that are about sharing joy, music, movement, and more. Some of them are immaterial. Like rainbows, they only appear for a moment. Asad Raza, right now, is on a boat sailing from Buffalo to Cleveland. He will arrive in just a couple of hours. And he's been on this boat for two days with a number of musicians. They're creating a new song that will be premiered at the Old Stone Church on Saturday at 6 p.m., right after our block party. But we also have the power of song as performed by many people. Lenka Clayton and Philip Andrew Lewis from Pittsburgh have worked with over 20 choirs across Cleveland, Akron, and Oberlin to create a composite work called 524. It is the voices of 524 people brought together in song. And I assure you, I assure you when you see it at the Cleveland Clinic, you'll understand the healing power even of numbers and abstraction. Also at the Cleveland Clinic and Case Western's Samson Pavilion, just across the street, you will see works by artists such as Naim Mohaiman, whose work Jole Dobe Na looks at end of life and the relationship between a couple, but also uses sound and poetry and reading to think about how we inhabit that deep space of loss. Right close to there, 
at Quincy Gardens across from Caramo House, we have one of multiple works by Abigail DeVille, The Dream Keeper, where she has worked with residents of the Fairfax neighborhood to make a set of sculptures that thinks about a book of Langston Hughes poems. This working with communities of different kinds, these intersections are essential to our project. If there's one word that I would use to discuss the four years that have gone into this process, and maybe the four or more years that will come after, it is the word collaboration. Jacoby Satterwhite is an artist who has worked with the Cleveland Clinic and residents of the Fairfax community to imagine what might utopia look like, and his work has become a permanent public sculpture as well as an installation at the Cleveland Institute of Art's Rheinberger Gallery. But also collaboration happens not only between artists, communities, and commissioners, but also between artists who never knew each other. For example, Sarah Oppenheimer and Tony Cox, who met during the pandemic on Zoom through Front's introduction and have created a new work at Transformer Station that pushes each of their practices into very new territory. And there are collaborations and projects that last for years yet to come. We have projects by artists such as Cooking Sections who have two fountains in the harbor right near the Rock Hall, but also a three-year project undertaken with spaces and a number of farmers across Ohio to try to help them develop together regenerative farming practices that will save Lake Erie. And this is something that might be invisible to many exhibition goers, but it is important because any exhibition is just the tip of the iceberg. It's maybe the top 20% that you see and everything else is under the surface. And I'll also call out Ahmet Ugut's work at the Allen Memorial Art Museum, which you shouldn't miss. It's a work called Bakunin's Barricade, which thinks about revolution, art, and the power that art can have in times of social unrest. And finally, one last project, a small project, something you might miss, but that is important in this methodology. Cassie Thornton, is an artist who has made an installation at the National Museum of Psychology in Akron. Her project, The Hologram, is just about how small groups of people, four people at a time, can come together to give each other health care and mutual aid. But this is important, that even today, each one of us could take a small act that might change something in the world, it doesn't have to be a massive exhibition. It doesn't have to be something that's visible to thousands of people. It can simply be in the next time you encounter somebody new, introducing yourself by name, I'm Prame, and asking them what their name is. So thank you, everyone. I hope that you will enjoy the next days and months and years as this project unfolds and I can't wait to hear what you think of it all. I'm going to leave this QR code up on the screen for a moment. A full slideshow with notes and more material is available for anybody who's interested. I hope that we'll all learn a lot together. Thank you. Thank you, Prem, for sharing this with us. Um, uh, we have so much to discover today, uh, uh, but we have still more to announce. Um, although the draw of, and power of Front is sharing the work and talents of artists around the world, um, we know that our visitors and residents of our community want to see and understand the work of our own local artistic community. I am really proud of the deep representation of local and regional artists in our exhibitions uh, that we're opening today across multiple venues. Nevertheless, we felt strongly that as an institution, we wanted to do more than merely provide exposure to local artists. In a majority black city with a history of systemic racism, real we realized that we have a unique opportunity a responsibility to make a longer-term investment in building sustainable careers for artists of color in our community. 
With the support and encouragement of the Cleveland Foundation, Front has launched what we hope will be an ongoing program, the Front Art Futures Fellowship, designed to support local artists of color. Awardees of the fellowship will receive a $25,000 no strings attached stipend, professional training and support, front organized national and international travel, appointment to our 2025 artistic advisory team, and an invitation to participate in front 2025 as, it, as an exhibiting artist. We are pleased to announce the 2025 Art Futures Award Fellowships to awardees today, and I'd like to invite Deidre McPherson, our Director of Artistic and Community Initiatives, to announce the winners. Thank you, Fred. Uh, before I announce the winners, I would like to tell you a bit about the selection process that I had the pleasure of leading for Front. In order to make sure that this opportunity reached artists who might not normally participate in or benefit from the traditional cha uh, channels of support in the arts and cultural ecosystem, we assembled a nominating and selection committee of artists, curators, and thought leaders with deep roots in the communities of Cleveland and the surrounding area. I would like to thank Michael Russell of the Museum of Creative Human Art, Tirza Leg of the Firelands Association of Visual Art, Letitia Lopez of the Julia de Burgos Cultural Arts Center, Dara Harper of the Akron Black Artists Guild, Michael Gill of the Can Journal and Can Triennial, and front curator Annie Wishmeyer for their time and thoughtful help in generating and assembling and reviewing over 80 exciting applications for the fellowship. <laughs> Our front artistic team was assigned with the task of narrowing this field down to three awardees. I am pleased to share that the, the application pool was so strong that the artistic team was deadlocked on four candidates. We are now pleased to announce that not three, but four awardees of the first Front Art Futures Fellowship. Could you each please stand when I read your name? Amanda King. Amanda is a multidisciplinary conceptual artist, social justice advocate, also co-founding director and, and creative founder of Shooting Without Bullets. Please hold your applause until the very end if you could. Um, Antoine Washington, painter, curator, and co-founder of the Museum of Creative Human Art. <laughs> Charmaine Spencer, a mid-career multimedia sculptor. and Erica Townsend, a, rise, a rising multimedia artist, painter, and recent CIA graduate. Uh, and now I'll play a video to introduce you to our fellows. Um, I've always known that I wanted to be an artist. I, I've known it since, like, in, I was playing in the mud making mud pies, and I decided I was going to do that for the rest of my life. <laughs> so I'm going to make stuff for the rest of my life. That's what I'm going to do. Um, so I don't tend to draw my sculptures out. I don't even tend to, um, to like, make models of them. I just start the work and like, like let it form as I go along, the way it feels, working with the materials. I want to make as much work as I possibly can, <laughs> you know. Um, I want to show as much work as I possibly can. I, I want to be able to make the work that I can't on my own. Most of my work is is to ref, uh, reflect the times and like struggle and 
the beauty behind it, the beauty in overcoming obstacles. In my dreams, I would love to be able to think of something and have the facility to do, to create it. What I do in my art is to tell a story. I pick stuff from pop culture to like stand in as an avatar of what I'm trying to talk about since it's like something that's so common that people know rather than like retelling a story. It's like, well, I'm going to grab this since you already know that reference. I work however I want. I, I have this one quote where it's like some substantially inconsistent, meaning that like I, I do what I want rather than being stuck in a bubble of like what type of medium or what type of way my art looks. So I think it's just art all around me that inspires me and stuff that I grew up with as a kid. And pop culture in general, it can even be something simple like a line from like a song or like something someone's wearing in a TV show. It can be like a, a logo or just a movie. So that's what I'm excited about and getting to work on like a, a larger body of work over three years seems super cool. It's like a cycle because during 2018, I was an intern at MOCA doing front and now I'm a, I have a residency here doing front and now like I will be in front. I always wanted to bring it back to family and the foundation of how you build community. And so this piece right here just simply speaks to that. I want to put out more images and positive images of black people being together. Like I really just want to uh, show us in a positive light. They like the Panther will probably be the overarching theme in there. I wanted to like use that as a symbol of uh, intelligence, of strength, uh, in our community and everything is centered around that. But I always wanted to keep those principles in the center of, of community building. And so that's the reason why you see the Panther in the center of all of these stories that I'm telling. So the nose is a stylistic choice, but it's also me being nosy in history. It gets people to say, why? And so when you ask why, I won. I'm mean, super excited about the opportunity. I just think that it's going to allow me and the others who are selected to be able to scale their careers and be able to like get different experiences that can hopefully can lead us to out of Cleveland and other places uh, where we can make our work stronger in Cleveland. These little iterations of my ideas and my being and my essence, I know that there is spirit in it because I'm sort of surrendering to the process of creating. I'm not trying to say or do too much or achieve too many things, but just get it distilled down to whatever is the feeling or message that I'm communicating, which is largely going to be on those concepts of transformation, resurrection, and multiplicity. So there was a theoretical context and framework that I began to adapt in my work took amazing African art course with my professor Diala Torre and learned about black cultural expression. And that became context for the black cultural experiences that I already had, mainly um, black social gatherings, black church. I'm excited to bring what I'm seeing and feeling and experiencing on the streets of Cleveland into cultural spaces that I create for the for the community and audiences and the world to see that um, Cleveland shaped this, that Cleveland helped me distill this. It's very important. Please join me again in applauding for our four Front Art Futures Fellows. Thank you, Deidre, and congratulations again. Um, so we're coming to the end of our show. Um, uh, I don't want to stand uh, in the way of seeing art anymore. Um, I do want to urge people to pick up the 
uh, front pocket guide. This is your uh, guide to the journey um, through the exhibition. I think it's available already in the gift shop here. It's uh, hot off the presses. I think the ink is still wet. Um, uh, I'd also uh, like to encourage everyone to pick up a copy of the front exhibition guide, which is being distributed free all over the region. Um, uh, and uh, as an insert in the New York Times, um, it's uh, um, uh, a, a great way to get started on your journey. There are maps, uh, um, project descriptions in the pocket guide. Uh, and of course, at the end of the show, we will um, create a second, uh, a catalog, a record of the work that we're presenting here. Uh, and uh, I think that it will be a terrific um, uh, piece. Um, so before I wrap up, I want to just finally say thank you to our team. Uh, this has been an incredible effort. Uh, uh, Sarah Liska, Allison Smith, Naomi Columna, Janet Renner, Deidre McPherson, uh, Anna Tellerico, Annie Wishmeyer, Brian Shawless, Land Studio, and many, many more people worked so hard to make this happen. I'm so grateful to them. And finally, I want to thank my wife, Laura Bidwell, who has um, been very tolerant uh, over the past three years, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but uh, been a wonderful supporter. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Enjoy, um, oh gods of dust and rainbows, and a summer in Cleveland. Thank you very much.